نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفته من خلقه وحبيبه قد بلغ رسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الأمة وجاهد في سبيل دينه حتى أتاه اليقين فاللهم اجزي عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جزيت به نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحينا على سنته وأمتنا على ملته واحشرنا تحت لوائه وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظم بعدها أبدا أما بعد We are continuing to cover the Quran from the Quran The Quran is the subject of our life the subject of our afterlife and the subject for everything else that relates to this life and the life to come. So it is worthy that we give it that long time which is our life. First, to understand it. Second, to benefit from it by applying it into our life. Third, to share those benefits with others, members of our families, neighbors, colleagues, classmates. So this is the book that will save us, but it is all up to us to decide how do we want to go about it. So today we're going to share some issue that some young people are asking, what is the function? What are the functions of the Quran? Why did Allah send down the Quran? So we're going to see what Allah says about this. Inshallah. In, uh, in Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 105, Allah says, We have sent you the book in truth. So the sender of the book, one of his holy names is Al-Haq. And the book is sent in truth, bil haq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Haq min Rabbik. There is no source for Haq except the word of Allah and the word of His Prophet. But primarily, the Quran is the source of Al-Haq. Something could be true, but truth is something else. True means it is visible, it is judgeable, it is tangible. Truth, we can measure it, we can test it. But when you say the truth, it is something that only comes from Allah, the only true God, the only true one who created this universe. Why? The ayah continues. لِتَحْكُمَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِمَا أَرَاكَ اللَّهِ So that you may judge between people with that which Allah has shown you. So why do we have the Qur'an? To use it as a reference for judgment. To use it as a source of knowledge. To benefit from it is treasures. To get in the place where we want and if we don't want to get to that place, the Qur'an will doom us to get to the other place. So the Qur'an in any way is going to either lead you where you want to go or will push you where you don't want to go. In the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, that the Qur'an is the light of Allah SWT. No. If you use it and put it ahead of you, it will lead you to paradise. If you throw it behind your back, 
it will keep pushing you towards hellfire. How does this happen? <coughs> it happens when you put the Quran behind you and the Quran keeps reminding you the shaitan will keep having your eyes hooked on what you could see but the Quran you cannot see it behind you so it will keep pushing you to follow your whims and desires and this is the work of the shaitan the shaitan has a function Allah has his own process and the shaitan has his own license his license is to persuade us, to tempt us, to deceive us, to lure us where Allah never wants to see us. This has to be clear. So when we keep the pushing from behind, we are not heading towards paradise. But if you follow the Quran, you have to put it ahead of you. You have to put it in front of your eyes. You have to put it in your heart. You have to understand it. You have to want to live by it because it is the only manual, if you will, that came with our creation. Before Allah had created us, He has put the Quran together ready to receive us. Much better than a mom preparing a good room for her baby before birth. Before birth, good moms, good dads, would put the best they can to receive the baby. Allah has prepared the whole earth, the whole universe for us. Part of that preparation is this book. And then this book was put in Al-Lawh Al-Mahfuz, the uh, eternally kept book. So it was with Al-Lawh Al-Mahfuz. And then Allah SWT sent it down to the lower heaven, ready for Jibreel to pick it up and learn it well and teach it to the Prophet So when Allah says, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ It is a good reference to seek the truth. That's why in the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, he says, وَمَنِ ابْتَغَ الْهُدَى فِي غَيْرِهِ أَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ Anyone who seeks guidance anywhere except in that book, in the Qur'an, he will be misled. Allah will let him go wherever he wants. You want to read uh, Tolstoy and Hemingway and Charles Dickens or anyone else that you love, read them. But don't seek guidance from them. Don't follow their guidance. Follow the guidance of Allah SWT. So the golden standard for truth is here. The actual truth is here, in the book, in the Quran. So anyone else that teaches you anything that is different from the Quran, he is not telling you the truth. So the truth is not only the difference between lying and telling the truth. The truth in the absolute meaning is what comes from Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us Al-Haqqu min Rabbik Truth only comes from Allah. When it comes to truth about life, its purpose, its pitfalls, its temptations, the power life has that captures our attention, all of this, you learn it in the Qur'an, free, free. All what you need to do is spend some time with this book, appreciate it and give it the value it deserves. In Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala tells the Prophet وسلم, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ we have not sent you but as a mercy to the world. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً لِقَوْمٍ يُؤْمِنُونَ 
وهدى ورحمة وبشرى للمؤمنين. So these are some of the functions of the Quran. It leads us, or so it should, lead us to become optimistic and hopeful and trusting of Allah and we should spread the same spirit and attitude to all humans. When you live in his kingdom, you should never fear. You should never be sad. When you live by his guidance, you should never worry about tomorrow. This is the real life. In fact, the Quran describes the Quran as the only source of life, the only source of light. أَفَمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ Are they equal? The one who was dead, and then we gave him life. Life means this. وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا The Quran is nur. وَالنُورَ الَّذِي أَنْزَلْنَا This is the light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down. So, without light, we live in darkness. Without this Qur'an, we have no life. It's miserable. It is very miserable. And whatever misery that we live in as individuals, or families, or nations, or societies, it is because steering away from the source of good life, the source of light. Without light, we cannot see anything. And without all of this, we cannot be a source of mercy for people and the world in which we live. So in Surah Ibrahim also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif Lam Ra Kitabun Anzalnahu ilayka litukhrij al nasa min al dhulumati il al nur. One of the purposes of the Quran is to get people out of darkness into Light, light where you can see. And people who do not live by the Quran, the Quran describes them in Surah An-Nur as ظلماتٌ بعضها فوق بعض Darkness on top of each other. إذا أخرج يده لم يكد يراها If he gets his hand out in the darkness, layers of darkness, under the ocean, he could not barely see it. It's an amazing description. Why is the Quran taking all of this text to tell us this is the book, this is it? Because number one, Allah knows that we learn something and a few minutes later we forget. Especially in our age and time. We are so busy, so distracted with everything in life that we talk and you tell me a piece of information, and a few minutes I ask you, what did you say your name is? Because we are so distracted. And you cannot overfill a full cup. When you have any cup that is full of anything except air, you cannot add to it, you will spit it over. So when our heart is full with the Quran, then and only then, we see everything else as distasteful and unworthy of our time. Because our heart is full of the real thing, the real source of light. So, لِتُخْرِجَ النَّاسَ كِتَابٌ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ لِتُخْرِجَ النَّاسَ To get people out. Does he do it by force? No. He cannot force anyone. He gives you the rope, if you hold on to it, you will be pulled. Because this rope, this book, the Prophet says, Allah is holding the other end of where this book leads, which is towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لِتُخْرِجَ النَّاسَ من الظلمات إلى النور بإذن ربهم with the leave of the Lord إلى صراط العزيز الحميد. This is very important to understand that the purpose of the Quran 
is not to restrict your free will, but to direct it where your benefit is. And I want to direct this discussion here on this point to our young people in the audience. The purpose of Islam is not to stop as a stumbling block against your good desires, but it is a protection against your falling to evil desires or harmful desires. So the Arabs used to say that an ounce of protection is better than a ton of treatment. So this book is meant to protect. And in that protection process, there has to be restrictive rules so that you do not violate your own interest. Then you say, I know my own interest. Then if you know your own interest, really, which means you're claiming to know the truth. You don't need Allah to tell you what the truth is. You don't need the book to tell you where you should go. You don't need the Quran to tell you what your priorities are, what your rights and limits are. That means you're lost. You're lost because you're assuming something. And if your assumption is wrong, your logic will be wrong, your conclusion will be wrong, and you will reach against what you claim you are going to get. So this is one of the purposes of the Qur'an, to get people away from and out of darkness into the light of the Qur'an. And to make sure that we understand how scrutinized this book is by none other than Allah, you need to read this. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Quran. Don't they ponder this book? Why don't they ponder the book? Why don't we reflect on its ayat, its guidance, its judgment? Why are we turning away from the source of life, prosperity, and good end results? Why? Why do we leave the Qur'an and go to the law of Mr. So or Mr. So or Mr. So? Why? Why don't we go to Allah? Are we afraid? Why don't we go to the Qur'an for judgment when we dispute? Are we afraid Allah will wrong us? He will not be just to us? Or are we afraid that what we are going to get from other people's judgment is greater than what Allah gives us. Is it greed and selfishness? Or are we seeking truth? Are we seeking justice? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises this question more clearly in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Do they want and desire the ruling of jahiliyyah, the ruling of ignorance. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حُكْمًا لِقَوْمٍ يُقْنَمٍ Who is better than Allah to give good judgment? Who could compete? Is there anyone that is a better judge in our eyes than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because this is what it means. When I prefer you to be a judge in my case, over him, it means I expect you to favor me. Who is going to favor you better than Allah who is just? And Allah has no biases. He has no biases towards or against anyone. The white, the black, the brown, the tall, the short. He has no biases whatsoever. He rules what is just, exactly just. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا If this book were from anyone other than Allah, you would find a lot of discrepancies. One time it says this, the other time it says that. And unfortunately, I want you to pay attention to this. Some Muslims 
use parts of the Quran against each other. So you tell him, Allah SWT says this, this is how you need to treat your husband, this is how you need to treat your wife, then the answer is, what about he, what about she? As if we want the Quran to be torn into pieces, pieces for me and pieces against somebody else, which is the same. So when we do not use our desires, when we do not use the Quran to give us what we desire, we get the best. But if you want to use the Quran for your own whims, the Quran is not made for that. The Quran is not going to be custom tailored to our expectations. We have to custom tailor our expectations to what is in the Quran. This is the essence of submission. Submission means I tell Allah, whatever you have for me, in my case, in your book, I submit to it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us submit to His will and apply His will and accept His will in this life for a better hereafter. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبته ومن اتبع سنته بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Brothers and sisters Our most important duty Next to saving our neck in the hereafter is to save the necks of our family and our children. Please, let your children understand the value of the Quran. Please spend time with your children, not just to spell the Quran or read the Quran, but primarily to understand the functions of the Quran in our life. We are not done. There is a lot of ayat that will explain more functions, inshallah, in the future. But at least, at least, let us start the journey of tying our lives to the Qur'an and bringing the Qur'an to bear the fruits for our family and our children in this life and in the hereafter. We need them to understand the beauty and the value and the benefits of the Qur'an. By the way, many of us want to use the Qur'an for what we call barakah. I explained it before, but I will repeat it. Barakah means to gain the benefit of something. But if you have the most valuable anything in your pocket, but you do not benefit from it, it has no barakah. So barakah is the benefit you gain from anything. Barakah means something that gives you something. That's why al-ard al-mubarakah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-ard al-lati barakna fiya. This holy land that Allah has blessed is giving people whatever Allah allowed it to give of blessings. So the spirit you see of resenting occupation, fighting against occupation, fighting to live life with dignity. This is one of the barakat of the Holy Land, that Allah has blessed this land, and He has blessed those who live in that land and around it, who live by the Qur'an. So, once again, let's live by the Qur'an, and let the Qur'an give us better life and let us take the Qur'an to our children and make it what it is, lovely, beautiful utterance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to our own benefit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us to follow his book. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawaddana fi man tawallayt, wa qina usrif anna sharra ma qadayt. اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول بيننا وبين معصيتك 
ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا وإذا أردت بقومنا فتنة فنجنا منها يا مولانا غير خزايا ولا مفتونين ولا مبدلين ولا مغيرين أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فستذكرون ما أقول لكم وأفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد وأقم الصلاة